I'd like to welcome everyone to the uh, UNI press conference. First up today is volleyball and head coach Bobby Peterson. Uh, Panthers ran their season-long win streak to six in a row with two sweeps at Indiana State and Evansville. Home this week, Southern Illinois on Friday and Missouri State Saturday. Both matches 7 o'clock in the McLeod Center. Next up, head coach Bobby Peterson. Uh, just a couple of general comments. Uh, first of all, just really proud of the effort this weekend. I thought uh, we, we showed some strength in some areas, and just to point a couple of those out, uh, we had a great serve and pass game, which is something we definitely shoot for, uh, match in and match out. And then I was just really proud of their uh, offense as well. Statistically, uh, we hit every goal, if not exceeded every goal offensively. Uh, love to see that. We had some players really step up that have um, been a little bit quiet. Uh, we're get, getting them the ball a little bit more. Uh, JJ, C Haas had a great match for us on both nights, actually, uh, with her hitting percentages and, and really feeling more comfortable with the different things that we're having her do. So that was really good. The other thing uh, that I have to compliment our team on, when we went in to play Evansville, uh, obviously as coaches we, we do a lot of scouting. We ha feel like we have them scouted upside down, inside out. And then we got the stats from their pr previous match the night before against uh, Drake. And uh, we thought it looked a little odd, but we also are uh, – available to get their film. So we got the film from the night before, completely different from anything that we've seen uh, in all the matches that we scouted. So uh, going in, you know, what do you tell your kids? Do you talk about the what they've been doing for week after week after week, or do you talk about last night? So we decided to make it very generic and then just kind of go from there and, and do a lot of match time uh, adjustments. And our kids really, really handled that well. I think as coaches, we were a little bit more, I don't know if freaked out's the word, but um, we were a little bit more concerned about it than our kids were. Uh, they handled it really well and really proud of the execution, uh, not really knowing a whole lot going in. So proud of the effort this weekend. I think when you look at a couple things to maybe um, get better at as we go in through this week, uh, still looking for some more options on the serve-receive offense. Uh, we're doing really good getting comfortable with the things that we're doing, but again, adding a little bit more uh, to our plate when it comes to that. And then we would also like to do a little bit more with blocking in terms of uh, both technique and the strategies that we're uh, able to develop throughout the matches. So those will be some big focuses for us this week. Looking forward to having uh, five matches in a row at home. Uh, it's crazy, but we're really excited about that. Uh, and for us, this weekend is huge uh, in terms of the competition. We have Southern Illinois and Missouri State, as Colin said. Uh, both teams playing well right now. Both teams, when you look at the statistical side, uh, in the top five in the conference. Missouri State uh, is in the top five, or top one, two, or three in every category. Uh, when you look at Southern Illinois, just real quickly, um, they're a team that returns almost everybody from last year. They have a new coach, which is different, and they're the team that last year ran that crazy fast offense that we have a hard time practicing. They've slowed that down a little bit uh, with the new coaching staff. It's a little bit different, uh, but still have some those same kids uh, doing a lot of really good things. Uh, very balanced offense. I think when you look at uh, the conference, probably the most balanced offense uh, offensive team out there. Uh, the other thing is they run a 6-2, which again provides a lot of uh, challenges because they always have three attackers up in the front row play Missouri State who is obviously the league favorite and uh, there's a reason for that a very strong team on all sides of the ball uh, played a great non-conference schedule uh, beat some really good teams also competed with some of the best teams in the country going four or five games with them and I think what makes uh, Missouri State challenging is they have a couple really good go-to players. Lily Johnson, player of the year the last two years in the conference. Uh, Lindsey Wright, one of the best middles for sure. Uh, but they're so balanced after that, and they have kids that can really perform uh, that help them out. They have gone to a 6-2, in and out of a 6-2-5-1, which is very different from years past, um, and it's really uh, been a good thing for them. Again, three attackers all the time in the front row. Uh, so looking forward to some great competition this weekend, and again, uh, very excited to be at home. Questions? I do think that. And, you know, one of the things we talk about is just the preparation. And that includes starting uh, today, Monday, uh, with our first practice and our ability to evaluate film from our own weekend and then obviously going into the teams that we compete against. Uh, but from that pregame warm-up, just being more consistent with everything that we're doing. Uh, it's really easy for our kids to get up for some what they consider big matches. As coaches, they're all big, and, and we know that. Uh, so we're, we've really asked for consistency in a lot of different areas and not just when we get on the floor to compete and I think that's really helped uh, we've had some captains that have really taken that to heart and, and making sure those types of things are happening 20 matches into the season um, a lot of 
preparation not to get probably mental to being prepared for do you get concerned at all that you dominated your, your six conference opponents, you're eighteen and two and seven against the conference. Do you have to guard against a little overconfidence with this group or is that something that you just see that, that they prepare for every opponent the way you want them to? Yeah, and that you know that's part of it. You know, I I don't ever think that um, we will we'll feel overconfident. I just think, like I said, our our preparation is different from match to match, and and we've had a lot of experience over the years, um, understanding the importance of being ready for every match that we play. I think this weekend you're going in a weekend where you know Southern Illinois has always given us trouble. You're playing the league favorite in Missouri State, so there's not a lot of that for this weekend. Uh, but that's one of the reasons why we've talked about trying to make it consistent with everything that we're doing. You know, if you have something you do before big matches do the same thing before a match that you don't consider the same and it's never really like I said uh, overlooking an opponent it's just I think you, we all have that you can just get up for different matches differently I think, you know, at this point, you just you have the chronic things that just are going to happen. But I think you know, our trainer does a great job of getting our kids prepared. You know, there's some weeks where we're not um, practicing people as much as we would like to. You know, we hold them back. Just We have a few shoulders um, that are bothering people, a few knees. So we just try to keep them out of practice when we can uh, and allow them to rest that way and then have them uh, at match time. So I would say it's very normal what we have right now. All right, thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Next up, head coach Mark Farley. The Panthers will head to South Dakota State, take on uh, the Jackrabbits, 2 p.m., Coughlin Alumni Stadium on Saturday. Next up, head coach Mark Farley. Coach, have you, did you invoke that 24-hour rule after that tough loss that, you know, whether it's a big win or big loss, you got 24 hours to get over it? No, it's now it's 48. It's it'll it'll go on a little bit longer than that for me. So uh, we'll just we'll just deal with it and, and uh, get ready for South Dakota State. As far as the running game is concerned, Coach, uh, being able to watch, go back and watch the film, anything come to mind at first about maybe what sticks out about that game in particular, where the struggles were? I don't know if there's anything that sticks out. It was. We weren't. We didn't win first down like we needed to. When we didn't, and, and we didn't make, we didn't make some plays we should have. Let's put it that way. And when we didn't make those plays, got out of rhythm, and then stayed out of rhythm. Never got them back in sync. And then uh, some turnovers cost us some momentum at times. But when we captured the momentum, we should have kept the momentum, and then we didn't do that. We lost it again. So those are the things that I said was inconsistent. Is you you don't come out very well on one side of the ball, but yet you're at at the half, you're ahead, and not even playing that well. And the same thing in the second half, uh, had things under control, and then had had chances to uh, take a good size lead, and where you can really control some things on the on the play calling sheet and then didn't take advantage of those and then got behind the eight ball again and fought your way back out, out from behind that. So there's a lot of there's some good things in the whole thing, but uh, you know, you get caught up trying to figure out how to solve the inconsistencies. But there were some good things that happened along the way in the first half and in the second half. But it's those things that keep holding you back is what frustrate you. Yeah, there are uh, things that uh, to, to, I can speak to or probably just made, just had some poor choices, made some poor poor decisions. Uh, and, you know, unless unless you can get 11 guys uh, incorporated in the same way, doing the same, you know, getting, the, getting to the same spots, you'll, you'll struggle against good football teams. So that's why we don't, we don't have 11 totally in command right now. We've got 11 at times, but, but, uh, and when we got them at times, it's, it's all, it all looks good. But, uh, when there's one guy in the fray, it tends to break down and then big plays happen for and against. So, uh, we just, we just gotta get, get those errors taken care of. With knowing what you have ahead, what coming off that loss, 
what are some of the main focuses that you, you've got to work on over the next three days in, in prep for this tough stretch of games? Oh, we're probably – what do we got to work on? Probably – We won't. We won't. We'll, we'll, we'll work on what we work on. We'll have to look at personnel in a couple spots, and we'll have to find a. There's a lot of things I got going on right now, but what can I speak to right now? We need. To, we need to work as. We need. We need to make sure what the what the calls are made are for. That we can get the most out of. Everybody on the football field. We got we got to play to their ability, and we have to play to their where they're at in their game right now. And we can, we got to stay in that package, what they can handle and what they can play, and 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 get better execution. When we execute, we're okay, but uh, okay isn't good enough. So we we got to make sure that we got to get to another level. So yeah, can you be frustrated and mad about what happened? You bet you can. Okay. Can you let it get you down and can you let it hang over you? Not at all. You can be as mad as you want to be, and you should be. If you're not, I'd be worried. But you cannot you cannot be down about it and worry about it. You gotta find find ways to correct and solve and move on. And that's and that's what we'll take care of. What about South Dakota State as you start to scout them and look at them? What what jumps out at you with, with what they're gonna throw at you? Their quarterback. Their quarterback is is excellent. And uh, and that's 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 really what's transpired in this league. The quarterbacks in this league are are getting really good, and they're playmakers. They're making plays when when everything is is crashing down on them. And uh, this this guy coming up is is one of the heck. They're all good, so he's one of the better ones in this league. You know, and, and you say that and I'm not. I'm not happy with the pass rush. It's it was okay. Again, okay isn't good enough for us. For me, it's 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 you know it's it's who you play. You better have a great pass rush when you have great quarterbacks, and uh, you better have you better get some coverage sacks along the way too to create that. Because if you send if you if you get if you get uh, in a habit of sending five and six guys, then you're really you're really strung out as far as can you hold up in coverage across the board and match up well. So it's your matchup and your pass rush that go together. So I thought we came off the ball well. I thought I thought we did do that. I was pleased with that. And uh, and we had some guys get in there that hadn't played. They finally uh, got a chance to play and did some good things for us and saved, saved some energy uh, for some guys towards the end. But, uh, you know, it's that last drive that hangs over you defensively because you play good football and then that last drive occurs and which was a lot of a lot of had to do with the pass rush and that type of thing too so uh we knew that going in and that's a good football team they've, they've made they were in last second drives against south dakota a week ago and last year they were in two last second drives against north dakota state and, and south dakota state i mean i've seen that film a hundred times the last second drives uh from that particular football team that quarterback for the last two years and we were in that same situation, and we we had the down and distance we wanted, and we didn't and we didn't we didn't pull it off. So that's what we're mad about, if you want to call that. But that's that's what I'll remain frustrated about until it's fixed, until I get the all eleven doing what they did. But we shouldn't have been in that position. We should have been in a better position earlier in the football game because we had our chances uh, to do some things offensively to really take a good sized lead. And didn't do that, so let them hang around, and then and then we got into a battle and had to come back and and try to win it that way. You've had to coach against and face some really good wide receivers in the league over the years. But mm -hmm. what about this week with Weineke and then the the good tight end Goddard? How how tough is that to defend that that passing game? Same thing. It's it's uh, those two are excellent because they have great height and great speed and they catch everything close. And uh, so yeah, they're they're two. Two guys on the same team because they'll be on one will be on the left side, one will be on the right side, so they'll balance the field that way. And then when you do cover them, the quarterback can run. So that's what really makes it really dynamic is because the quarterback's ability to get out of trouble. And when you really see 
the games they're involved in. When the receivers and the tight end aren't making the big catches, you're seeing the quarterback make the big runs. So people have played them a little bit differently uh, with how they tried to handle them over the years. And, uh, you know, they're, they're playing really good. They, you know, they've been at home now for quite a few games, and they're, they're really confident. They're playing well. Probably their offense approach. You know, they only took 36, 40 snaps that day, which is unheard of. So it's really that's more the offensive approach, you know, and because and it was a huddle team on both sides of the ball. So it's kind of different than what you normally see. It was two teams that went to huddles and uh, and how they both played their game plan out. And it worked out for Youngstown and their game plan with how they could control the ball in a huddle offense and control the run game. They had a bunch of rushing yards that day and really controlled the clock. In fact, I think they ran out the last eight minutes of the game. Uh, I think the last the last I saw on the clock, because I thought I was missing tape, and uh, the last I saw on the clock, there was about nine minutes left to go in the game, and they never got back on the football field. So that tells you a lot of what they did offensively as much as what they did def defensively. I know you have a ton of trust in those, your back, you know, two freshmen on the safety spot, but it seems like teams have been attacking those Got a good analogy. Uh, what can I do to help them? That, that's 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 the task this week because they are going after them. There's no question they're going after those two guys, and uh, it's it showed up early in the, on, on the on the weak side in the game, and then showed up late in the, on, on the strong side in the game. So, you know, that's the dilemma right now is how to help those two guys, how to get them to in a better position, and then uh, and then find out. Yeah, there's there's choices to be made there. You want to send more people, or you got to send less people at the quarterback to help them, and which which one is is best for them, and what matchups do they have on the field? So, some of the things we got to look at this week when we get them lined up. You know, talking to South Dakota State after that Youngstown State game, they said this is going to light a fire in us. You think maybe this loss this past weekend could potentially light a fire in you, you guys? We'll find out. We'll find out. I'm not I'm not worried about the fire. It's it's more it's more the execution right now. So it's 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 the execution for four quarters. Is your frustration more physical plays? They're not physically where they're supposed to be, or is it mental? They're mentally not not in field. No, they're they're no, they're they're physically and they're they're there's errors. There's errors. Well, they're really not. They're not so much mental errors or technique errors. They're experience errors, you know, inexperience errors. I mean, there's the best way to learn is to play. It's just at what expense, you know, is what it is. So no, it's it's not that they don't know. It's not that they don't. It's not the mental error as much as it is possibly the physical error. And that's that's doesn't matter who you play. Either you you can or can't do. And and then you try to get matchups correct too out there and. You know, a couple times the quarterback got away, we had everything covered, and then he made some plays. So you got to get him on the ground, too. You go back to the other guys, you still have to get the guy on the ground when you can. Somebody's got somebody's to overcome a two-man battle. One guy's got to beat two, one guy's got to beat one if you're going to go help another guy. It's 11 on 11 last I looked. And uh, if you're going to go help one, you're giving up somebody else. So one has to beat two somewhere, and then if you're going to cover up another one. So that's kind of the chess match that you play all the time in football. He's probably the main one right now that, that, that took a hit that day. So, you know, he I'll find out later on this afternoon. I don't anticipate him this week for sure. But uh, we'll find out later on the length of that injury. That was too bad. He was a, he's a good football player. And, you know, he was, he was versatile. He, he, was, he spun a lot of positions for us. So, you know, that, that was, you know, fortunately he's really young. But uh, he's really talented. Yeah, he'll play this week. Yeah, yeah. That that had probably helped him a little bit because he wasn't quite to 100 percent, but he played good. He play, actually played very good when he came in. I guess the, the tough question here, you know, now you're facing this 
tough stretch. Is there a path to playoffs for you guys still? I, I'm I'm just trying to get to see what I'm going to do this afternoon, <laughs> so so uh, we'll figure we'll figure that out as we go. But uh, you know, as I look at it, South Dakota just beat Youngstown. Is that correct? And South Dakota, these guys were driving South Dakota the last drive of the game a week ago, and won that game 38-33. So as I look at that, and then I look at if I remember right, Western Illinois beat Northern Arizona, correct? And the North Zero got did they, did they not beat Illinois State? So I'm looking at those things right there. I mean it's it's crazy what could, can and can't happen right now because there's not a whole lot of difference between a South Dakota and a Western and a Western and a whoever right now. So it's it's you better come every week to play. Your quarterback has to play great every week and turnovers uh will create problems and keep people in game. So you can't beat yourself in any of these games. That's probably the message you take. You cannot beat yourselves when you're in tight football games. You can get away with it against lesser teams, but you can't when you get in, in, in the stage of the game that we're in with top 20 teams all the time. And that's what this league has become. And a lot of this league has become the way it is because of the strength of the quarterbacks. The quarterbacks are really good right now in this league. And we're going against this kid this week. And then... Uh, Heck, the South Dakota one, he's having a tremendous year. He's he's lights out. And then you still got the kid at North Dakota State. I mean, you throw all those out there right now, the quarterbacks are carrying these offenses, which is a real challenge for the defenses. And that's why you cannot beat yourself offensively. You can't put your defense in bad position with your offense. And your offense has to be productive. So that's basically the game plan. If you ask me the game plan next week, I'll tell you the same one I just told you. Anybody else? Man, you're quiet. <laughs> uh, we, we kind of touched on a little bit here, Spencer Brown, eight-man guy, and Elias Nesman, eight-man guy. Talk about these eight-man guys that have been really playing a huge part for you. Yeah, they do a great job. They still got – yeah, they still got to learn 11-man football. You know, it's – it's uh, you know, in, in jest, I'll never forget Elias, Elias Nesson, playing a great – had a great game. Man, has he become a great player. I remember his first year here. We didn't know if he was going to be a very good football player because he had never lined up and he had never played a tight end position. He was the tailback and the linebacker for eight-man football. And that's just run to the football. He was a good athlete. And uh, now he's made himself into a great player. You know, Carter Schultz, he didn't know what a four-man front looked like. There's only a couple guys on the D-line where he comes from. So I can go right down the list. Of, of great eight-man football guys that became great players because of how they worked their game. So Elias is 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 right there in the list. He's he's a heck of a tight end. Started to really see him come about this year, and then he's really blossomed probably since September. Now he's really gone to another level, and you saw what we see, and that's why he's getting the football because I thought he's. He can block, he can run, he can get open just as good as a receiver can. And uh, he's big enough to play down the line of scrimmage and block for you. So, no, he's he's really good. Now, I went to Elias, you went to Spencer. Spencer, you know, was, what is he, 6'7", six, seven, six, seven, 230 pounds coming out of high school, looked like a basketball player. And he made himself into a into a 295-pound tackle that now we sorely miss because of an injury. When we're walking down the ramp to Iowa State, the last game he was in was – in, in an eight-man football game. So as, 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 as good as they look on the field, what I found is it is, it isn't easy for them. You think it's 11-man to 11-man, but there is a transition for an eight-man guy to go to 11-man to understand plays and concepts and things like that, not to understand catching and running, to understand plays and concepts of how you fit within a, a unit. And when they get that, yeah, then, then they're – then they really blossom fast because they're kind of behind when they get here. They have athletic talent similar to the guy beside them, but when they figure out the concept with the athleticism and really get to get busy in the off season, they really blossom and take giant steps. And we've had some eight man guys that have taken some giant leaps. So yeah, very very pleased with with that. Anybody else?
Thank you, Mark. Uh, next up, UNI Soccer, head coach Bruce Erickson. Panthers dropped a 1-0 decision at Missouri State over the weekend. Uh, now they'll be busy this week with a couple of matches, Tuesday at Drake and then uh, Saturday at Valpo. Next up, head coach Bruce Erickson. Yeah, we had uh, had a good good game with Missouri State, not the result we wanted, but uh, I think a, a good indicator for us down the road is as to how we deal with teams that are going to be a little bit more physical, physical and playing on a fast surface. So it was it, not all lost uh, in losing the game. I thought we played pretty well. Had a goal called back. Uh, had some decisions kind of go, you know, either way that that I think would have benefited us. But all around, you know, I, hats off to Missouri State. I thought they played pretty well. Um, and it's life on the road. I think the the beauty of it is is that we got a quick turnaround and. I think Drake will have, you know, our players will have no issues getting up for this for this game. So um, we're looking forward to playing tomorrow. Questions? Why was the goal called, called off or called back? We're not sure. Um, you know, I, I, I think the, the uh, explanation was that we had a player off sides. Um, but... You know, just watching on a film, you know, I, I, I don't know. We, we, I respect the decision. It's a tough, you know, it was such a, it was such a big scrum in front, literally in front of the goal. There were people on the ground. Um, it was off of a free kick and the ball, it was pinball in front of the net. And, um, you know, by their reaction, it didn't look like they felt anything was, was off. But, you know, that's going to happen. We've had, we've had a lot of things go our way. Um, you know, in other games this year, but you know that would have been nice. I think that was with 20 minutes left, so that that changes the game a little bit. But uh, you know, in fairness, we we gotta we gotta we gotta finish the other chances we had. We had we had a few um, very early on. We had a couple before we went down 1-0. So we got to be better than that. But it was, yeah, I guess it was offsides is what what we got they told to us. They have in a lot of sports. Is that not available in soccer? It it needs to be. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, soccer is a unique sport where, you know, you might have one or two reviewable plays, which are usually goal scoring or, you know, if there's a caution, you know, is it a red car? Was there something off the ball? Um, that, that certainly would help. They have it at different levels. It's, it's uh, you know, it's something that I think our league will probably look at, at trying to do. I think that the hard part is, Everybody's a little bit different, you know. You got some on campus fields, some off campus fields, just getting you know, having the technology, um it, you know, I it it would be helpful, but you know, in this game we, we just needed to be we just needed to be better. How's Drake been playing this season? Good, good. You know, we we uh we definitely got the challenging schedule. We got four in a row on the road, um in the league, which uh you know, as it looks like right now, it's the next three are against. You know, if you pull us out of it, are against the top three. So, they've been they've been good. Um, you know, and I think it's the same way in all sports. You know, this is, I would probably think, just an in-state game. It's it's kind of our rivalry game. So, you know, I think you you throw out wherever a team is at um, going into this game. I think it's always a dogfight. You know. Um, we got a chance to play him in the spring, which was unique. I hadn't played anybody uh, in the league before in, in a spring game, and, and I don't think either team has really changed a lot, so that gave us a pretty good idea. Um, but I think conditions are going to be, uh, I think I saw 45 and raining all day, so it, not going to be ideal. It's going to be who who rolls up their sleeves and wants it, you know, wants it more. I think it's going to be... Um, Different soccer. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Next up, uh, you and I swimming and diving, and uh, head coach Nick Lakin. Uh, Panthers got their season underway in Iowa City when they took on Iowa and Michigan State uh, this past Friday. They'll open the home season against Nebraska on Friday at 4 o'clock followed by a Saturday matchup with Sioux Falls at 3 p.m., uh, both in the Glen F. Henry Swimming Pool here on campus. Next up is first-year head coach Nick Lakin.
How are we doing, guys? Good. All right. Um, we, uh, yeah, we got our season underway against Iowa and Michigan State this weekend. Uh, so that was a wonderful opportunity for us to get kind of a gauge. Uh, we have 12 freshmen, so they got their first action um, and just <clears throat> trying to develop those guys and get them into the mix. And so uh, swam really well. Our uh, medley relay right off the bat set a pretty good tone by me beating Michigan State. Um, and then they just got touched out by Iowa. So that kind of um, increased our confidence as the meet wore on. Um, we also won five events against the University of Iowa and five against Michigan State. Uh, Katie Taylor won three individual events. Uh, Mariah Ross won the 200 breast against both teams. Um, and the 100 breast against Iowa, and then was second in the 200 IM to Katie. Uh, the divers had a good day with Hannah. Uh, Brummel had a great day on three meter, um, and also Alyssa had a good day on the one meter. Um, so like we said, just looking to develop some depth going into this weekend against another Big Ten opponent. <laughs> Yeah, um, well, we kind of had to right off the bat going against Iowa and Michigan State. So um, I, it's been a it's been a real honor to be here, um, and I'm very excited about the the change over to college athletics. Um, and the girls have been wonderful so far. So, what do you look for against Nebraska and Sioux Falls? What kind of goals do you have? Yeah, we uh, we talked to the girls quite a bit about just trying to to uh, take another step. Uh, we have some big goals this season, so just trying to take make everybody better than they were this past weekend. Um, Nebraska has not had a competition yet, so we don't know exactly what we're looking at as far as uh, that will go. Uh, Sioux Falls is kind of in the same boat, but um, we'll have a good challenge on Friday, and then Saturday uh, we'll we'll look to develop a little more depth and try some different events. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually am a local kid. I grew up here um, and then moved to New York when I was in high school. Um, swam at the University of Tennessee um, and then uh, finished up college at Marist College, uh, which is right outside of New York City, um, and then stayed on the staff there for a few years uh, before moving back here. And then I was run, uh, running the Blackhawk area swim team, which is a local swimming organization uh, with about 250 kids on a year-round basis. Um, and then started here in August. So, you inherited a pretty good team, right? With what this team did a year ago. Yeah, yeah. We um, we actually lost nine seniors, um, so that's obviously tough. But uh, the juniors and sophomores have taken a, a big step forward, and um, all the wins we had this past weekend were out of the sophomore class. So that's definitely something to build on. Um, and then twelve freshmen, just getting them used to going from what they whatever they their background was to jumping right into Big Ten competition was, was kind of a big step for, for most of those kids. Uh, are there any uh, of the ladies on the team that you would have coached when they were younger in the Blackhawks swim group? Um, actually, one of our divers, uh, Hannah Brummel, swam for us when she was younger. And then Afton Fife, who is, uh, actually stayed on as a fifth-year coach, um, swam for Blast for her whole career. So. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Go Panthers.